Hypercar Mountain. Hi, this is Larry Hatch, and welcome to another episode of Hypercar Mountain. This episode is called Cool Finds 1. I'm going to do at least five of these, and in each one we're going to go through uh, four unusual cars in the diecast 164 scale, and we're going to actually talk about the real cars. Because um, part of the reason I collect real cars, as opposed to fantasy cars and other things, uh, is to learn about them and study them. Um, it's really hard to know all the models of Ferrari and Lamborghini and whatnot. There's just scads and scads of them. And unless you collect them a little bit or read some books or have a lot of money to buy them, um, 164 scale is a great way to learn about these cars. Uh, the first one I want to talk about today is a French hypercar called the Genti El Coloni concept car. I first thought it was Gentry or Gentry, but it's not. And I have the website here. It's Genti-Automobile.com. And I put in the website because it's really hard to find information about the car. Uh, and, uh, it started out as a 2015 show car, and as near as we can tell, nobody has received one yet. I may be wrong, but it probably will be a, a real car soon, because uh, it's still on the website, and I understand it was shown in a couple of uh, car shows in 2018 and 2019, so it's still alive as a concept. I guess, you know, like a lot of these things, it's taking them time to to get their money together and to ring out the details. Um, and it is a hypercar made in France, or will be. And uh, the ones we have here are models from Majorette, French company, big surprise. And the Majorette examples come in black, green, a couple of different versions of orange with or without racing stripes. Um, uh, dark blue and also a rear gold version. Uh, I have these two here and they're very solidly made. Uh, they have a nice rear diffuser on the underside but like a lot of major cars not much chassis detail. Uh, the headlamps look to be uh, clear plastic inserts uh, you know based on the windshield molding and the tail lamps are painted in um, red with some tailpipes in silver in it, it kind of looks like a it's a very short looking car in real life and it uh, kind of has a lotus aspect to it but it's it's an original French car it uses a 6.0 liter v10 twin turbocharged engine making um, 2.7 seconds 0 to 60 time uh, by the time it comes out, it could be different. The original car only weighed 1,100 kilograms. It had 1,200 horsepower. So it actually exceeded the 1 to 1 holy ratio of where the kilograms and weight equal the horsepower. Uh, there's some question from other data I've seen whether it, it's going to keep that distinction, but who knows. Uh, initially, it was thought to be a million dollar car. But who knows? Uh, everybody's selling things for two and three million with these kind of horsepower numbers, so I guess we'll see. But it's a nice car, an interesting car, and you don't see it in too many uh, diecast collections. Uh, the next one I want to look at is the Lexus LFA, particularly the Nurburgring edition. And there's not a lot of really good-looking Lexuses in the 164 scale uh, that you can buy. And certainly not this supercar from Lexus. Uh, there is a beautiful Kyosho version of it, but unfortunately those sell for generally seventy to two hundred dollars in the rare variants, so they were never really on my radar. But guess what? One day, lo and behold, this car that I'm showing here from Tomika showed up. Doors open, beautiful yellow color. Lots and lots of deca details um, in terms of the lamps and the chassis underneath. Just a beautiful car. Very substantial and heavy. Uh, it's just a beautiful model. 
I went on eBay this morning, and you cannot find this uh, Tamika LFA Nurburgring Ring Edition uh, at all. All I could find was the expensive Kyoshos. So I'm not really sure why the this uh, Tamika is dated 2018. So maybe it's uh, been discontinued. Uh, but uh, you know, it was a reasonably priced car. I think it was like 12 bucks or something plus shipping. So glad I have it and uh, we can find more of these the real Lexus LFA was made from 2011 to 2012 officially and they promised they would in all variants they would make 500 of them the Nürburgring version is much more decorated um, and these cars have lots of carbon fiber on them uh, it's kind of a GTR killer if you will uh, that's sort of what Lexus was driven by and if you know today um, Toyota makes the Supra well this thing is in a whole different league it's got a uh, 4.8 liter V10 engine uh, making 553 in the base version 563 horsepower in the Nürburgring version and it uh, does uh, 3. Six seconds, zero to sixty, for a car from 2011. That's not too bad. Uh, its times on the Nurburgring are kind of secret. Uh, we know for a fact that it beat some Porsches. It beat a whole bunch of Lamborghinis, like Gallardos and Mercies, Murcielagos. Uh, we know it beat um, one of the. I think it was. This is one of the older ZR1 Corvettes. I'm not sure if it was Generation 6 or 7. But anyway, um, and it had Nürburgring times of 7 minutes and 20 seconds to 7 minutes and 38 seconds uh, in this Nürburgring setup. Um, pretty potent car. Uh, and it can kick, it, it beat actually a Porsche uh, GT3. I don't know if that was the RS version or not. But anyway. Uh, you know, if you can beat a Giardo, Murcielago, um, a ZR1, and a GT3 Porsche on the Nürburgring, that is a freaking good car. Uh, the price is a little steep for many people. It's $365,000 as new, and uh, that's why they only made about 500 of them, we think. I was told that they sold as used... Uh, three more cars in 2019 and by somebody's calculation that means there's like four more to go in 2020 and then they'll be done uh, again there's all speculation and rumor no hard numbers on that so people are still willing to buy this car it's uh i would i would take a look at jay leno's um video about it because uh, he got to drive it in japan and was blown away uh I looked up if I wanted to buy one today on the used market, and they were going from for 450 to 600 k. Um, boy, yeah, it's very much a collector's car. Um, again, the 3.6, boy, it's not a lot, but look at those Nurburgring track times kicking butt. Uh, I just want to say that um, it is a GTR killer. Uh, but a brand new GTR right now today will run you about 120 to 140k, depending on how you spec it. It could be 160 if you really got a lot of stuff on it. And the reason is, is this Lexus LFA uh, has tons of carbon fiber. Uh, they put titanium bits on it, aluminum bits, all kinds of exotic metals and stuff. They put titanium where people wouldn't even see it. I'm told, and you can read about those details. Um, boy, this is this is one hypercar, and like I say, you could sort of buy about three GTRs for the price of one of these things, just just to put that in focus a little bit. Uh, the next car I want to look at is a uh, more of a legend. In fact, it um, was made by Hot Wheels in part of their Car Culture series, where they issued. Uh, I believe it was five different pioneering Japanese cars. And the one I have here is the Mazda Cosmo Sport. In what is known as Series 1 or 2, 
in the 110s model. It's called 110s in the import model, and it's a it's a cute little car. Uh, it the Hot Wheels really went out. It's got rubber wheels, uh, beautiful silver, almost dish type wheels. The paint is a beautiful pearlescent white on the chassis and on the body, and it just looks different. I, I bought it and I was like, oh, I don't have one of those. I'm gonna buy that thing. Um, okay, it's not a supercar. Currently, in in this version, the the original, but it is a pioneering car, and I thought that's something a hypercar collector probably probably would have around. Uh, they were made for a long period of time, from 1967 to 1996, and this is the early 70s version of it, which was a convertible or a coupe. The early ones had 110 to 130 horsepower. And what was really interesting is they used German Winkel rotary technology for the first time in a Japanese car. And as you know, the famous RX-7 uh, continued that trend of Mazda making these rotary engines. But this was the first car pretty much that you could buy from anybody that had the Winkel rotary engine. And you could get them from... In the United States from I think 71 72 onward roughly uh, they changed the body design radically I guess they were looking to compete with the, the fair lady GTR type cars um, so the 1990s JC version which had a very different body almost looking a lot like an old GTR had up to 300 horsepower so they really developed that car uh, only 1176 were made of the early 70s series 1 and 2 and it was attended from the beginning uh, to rival the Nissan Fair Lady or Datsun Fair Lady um, known as today as the GTR it was also a rival of the Toyota 200 GT so that gives you a little bit about its place in history uh, the last car I want to talk about in this uh, edition here is a true supercar beyond any doubt. It's the Koenigsegg Agera RS. There were about seven models of the Agera made in Sweden from 2011 to 2018. And the name Agera in Swedish means to act. It's more of an expletive, um, uh, meaning act now. You better act now. Um... Among the connoisseurs, they're known as eggs, because Koenigsegg takes a long time to pronounce. Um, and um, they use a 5.0 V8 twin turbocharged engine. The original Agueras were based on a Ford V8. And then all of a sudden, Koenigsegg says, nope, nope, we don't use Ford engines anymore. We have our own engine. Well, some people have said, it looks like a whole lot like a Ford V8 still. Other people say, no, it's it's their own design. It's very much more sophisticated. But let's give Ford a little credit. They got them going. And I'll let you decide if it's the most expensive Ford V8 in the world or not. Technically, it's not. Uh, they make in the different variants between 1,016 and 1,360 horsepower. And that's why they're hypercars. Uh, their performance values are obviously going to vary but just on average the rs model that we have here uh does about 2.8 seconds zero to 60 again in 2011 that was unheard of top gear gave it their hypercar of the year award in 2010 when it first came out and the cars have set many many world records uh go to wikipedia and you can look at those world records i think this car went from zero to 240 miles an hour and then back to zero in like 90 seconds i mean just just unbelievable kinds of numbers um the cars have gone 285 miles an hour so at the time they were actually uh faster than the bugatti veyrons were of that period so for a brief period of time they, they were pretty much the fastest road legal car um in the world now that brings up another question. They are technically not road legal in the United States at the current time, 2020. 
But because so many are made, people get exceptions for them as show cars, display cars. You know, the very wealthy can, can really do weird stuff with temporary licenses and permits. So uh, you can't drive it daily, and why would you at its value? Um, but um, it's technically not street legal. It's not illegal to own one, however. Uh, they were $2.1 million new, and again, that's hypercar pricing. Um, because there were so few made, and we'll talk about that in a second, uh, you better you better want to part with $3 million at least for one. And if you want one of the final rare editions like Thor or Vader, they were one-of-a-kind cars, and God knows what they would be. They'd probably be in a 5 to $10 million range if people would part with them. Um we think, and nobody's terribly sure, of the RS model, which is the uh, coupe model we have here. We think about 25 were made. All told, with all the other models, maybe 30 to 40. Some people have said 50. Uh, but with so few cars, we sort of think we know who has them um, and what the different color combinations were, because these are all bespoke custom configured for you well at least the later ones were and uh, so let's say they made 30 to 40 of them all told so these are extremely rare cars extremely rare like I said the Lexus LFA supercar from Toyota they made 500 of them this thing is you know a tenth of that at the most uh, the new car that's replacing it is the Jesco Named after uh, the founder, Christian Koenigsegg's father, Jesko. And um, that car has been announced and uh, will be coming out very shortly. So thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe and we'll do more of these cool finds. Hypercar Mountain.